Okay, so pretty much the uh, the same as last week. This is a four and a half inch diameter, five five inches long. Uh, we should be able to find that in six inch long chunks if we're doing big production. Get the forklift handy because we're not going to uh, be able to to move easily uh, an eight foot stick, a ten foot stick, twelve foot stick of four and a half. Um, you know, and then and then cut it up. So if we say this is a six inch uh, chunk of material, that's pretty close. But it also sets me up to where I can either hold on to this diameter or probably this diameter. If I bring it up against the jaws, that would act as a stop, and then I could face off the backside. And even though that's a, a lot of cutting, you know, taking that inch of material, right tool geometry, I should be able to take it in you know maybe three or four passes. Um, you know, being really aggressive. Or, you know, five or six if I want to be a little gentler with it. All right, so the other thing that I'm, uh, I want to build into these, and we'll make it an optional item, not, not for the assignment. Um, but if we flip this around and did a, a boring operation, so just like we did the tap last week, we need to look at something that involves a boring bar at some point. And um, next week's geometry doesn't really have it in either. So... Uh, we'll see how this goes and um, and then uh, you know uh, adjust accordingly. So we're 5.175 and four and a half. So where I was expecting the um, the D value, um, I still didn't find the um, uh, the button that I was looking for. So we're just going to go back into the machine, tell it that it's a lathe, and we're going to accept the default lathe. The main reason that I'm doing that is I want to stay in the diameters. When I'm doing lathe, uh, we were joking last week, as the mill guy running the lathe, you don't want me mixing up dimensions, getting confused about diameters and, um, and lengths. So um, staying in, um, in that, uh, you know, that, getting into that frame of mind, staying in that frame of mind to, uh, to make it work. So 5.175, and I want to go in negative Z, so minus. And then the height is half of my four and a half. All right, and then we're back to that big rotating mass. Is um, When we look at the, uh, the jaws, we're probably going to have to flip the jaws around, holding on to one of the, at one of the steps. All right, um, we talked a little bit about the... Um, the warning, so let me finish this out before I go into too much deeper. 2.25, position it, and that will set up the uh, the distance for our geometry. All right. um, so with that much rotating mass, I don't want to get, uh, get too crazy in RPM. Um, you look at the warnings on any of the machines that says grease the, the chuck regularly, higher RPMs, reduces the clamping pressure, the rotating mass already plays a factor in that. Until we get down to, you know, kind of the last of the, of the chunks, um, I really don't want to get too aggressive on these uh, on these cuts. All right, so let's jump back over. We're going to have a one inch, a two inch, and a two and a half inch, and then we'll jump back up. So line, and I'm going to lock these into being horizontal again. And the first end point will be the beginning of the stock, second, and then the D value. Once we've set those end points, we'll go to one inch. Okay. And then it goes right back and says specify the first end point. And the second end point, D value is two inches. And then enter. And we're just going to keep going through that sequence, setting all of those all of those steps. So 2.5, and then the last one was 375 to the uh, to the outside step. Okay. All right. So once we get um, Get those diameters in place then we're now we're going to be looking at our depths two and a half three and a half we'll start with and might as well just uh, go with offsets and shifting offset all right so the very first item 
Oh, and then offset direction. Got to remember to read my uh, my prompt up here. So set the direction two and a half, and then we can uh, accept it and go next. And set the direction three and a half, and accept and go to next, and then four point eight. Okay, and that should do for the um, for the vertical lines. And then we'll clear the colors. So I can right click, clear color. Now I'll put it back into that kind of visible mode to where my selections clear, things that I'm going through all um, all get cleared out. All right. So just a quick double check. The uh, the taper goes from the one inch to the two and a half. And then we have a chamfer, and then we have the radius. All right, so I do want to put that one in. I am still set for horizontal, so I need to switch that back to freeform. And we'll go from one up. And then let's see, I wanted to, uh, said I wanted to leave a, um, a bore. So just in case, um, I'll leave, uh, leave some of these items. I'm, I'm still perfectly happy taking the divide delete and running through these. And even though it's kind of a lot of picking. I can always undo and get the stuff uh, back if I need it to. Alright, so it cleans up um, pretty quick. Let's see, that one was... Alright, so undo, undo, undo. <laughs> I needed that one because that one was the taper. All right, so not great, but not bad. I'm going to go ahead and accept it. Line from endpoint up. All right, and then uh, we can go back one more trim, and we'll make that geometry go away. All right, so fillet indies is uh, available. We'll go with the, uh, I believe it was half an inch. And I'm going to say that all but makes that one go away. And then we can accept. We'll go over to chamfer entities. Need to double check that one real quick. Um, so 30 thousandths by 45 degrees. And yeah, that was half an inch. All right, so we're doing uh, one distance. Let's do distance and an angle. That takes away you know, 0.03 or 0.03 or 0.03 and 45. Take your pick. All right, so pick the first one, pick the second one, and that doesn't look very big. At least not as big as... Uh... No, that's a 0.03, so... All right, well, we'll go with the, uh, the dimension. Uh, when in doubt, dimensions have priority over scaling drawings, so got to go with the dimension. All right, so that sets it up. <clears throat> now we can um, now we can start looking at this geometry. Let's see, anything else that I missed? I think I missed the chamfer on the uh, the end last week as well. So if you found that, go ahead and put it in. If not, that's okay. We'll pick it up later. That's what files are for, right? Okay, so have the uh, the geometry in place. So let's go ahead and set up the, uh, the property. So in this case, because this comes to a point, this really is that you know same thing. When I, when I start considering cutoff tools, I really don't want to plunge a cutoff tool two and a half inches deep or two and a quarter inches deep, whatever it worked out to. So since that's coming up to the, uh, to the angle, like I said, I'd rather just flip this around, find a convenient stop, uh, bring it up to where it um, it seats onto the to the face, and then go ahead and just face off the backside. There again, the questions are: Well, we picked a stock. We're going to stay with the four and a half, so I don't overrun this this point by too much. And then the um, uh, our other issue. Let's see. Just uh, you know, if we were if we were going to try and turn this to some diameter. The stock being round is less critical 
coming up to that point. All right, so the stock setup then, that was what I was going for. Uh, let's do the, uh, the files, default lathe, our tool settings, we set a program number, um, feed calculations fine, assign tool numbers and warn of duplicates. And we'll set the sequences one in one. We'll go ahead and uh, set the material. So all of these have been aluminum 6061. And that's more for memory, but then at some point if we do switch over to material, it'll have that, um, uh, it will be pulling from that 6061 library. All right, so for the properties then, said the OD is our um, four and a half, and the length, six inches. And we kind of see that start to update that we have material to hold on to. And the position along the axis, we're going to shift it over 30 thousandths. So mainly when it does the facing cut, it's just kind of a reminder we touch off on that face. Zero is going to be uh, a little bit further in. And then we can go ahead and accept. And now under the chuck jaws for its properties, we're not going to hold on to the outside. So one of the other warnings is do not send these uh, chuck jaws sticking out uh, further than the edge of the stock. And one of the reasons is that the way most of these chucks work with the little serrated edges, uh, I need to actually just pull up that picture. If, uh, if you run late and you know what I'm talking about, if not, we'll, we'll go out and take a look. But basically there is a T-slot that these slide into and engage on those little serrations. So when you loosen the, uh, the stock, if you get too far out, that T-slot nut is not going to be fully engaged. It's not going to have as much rigidity and, you know, there's a variety of issues. So we would flip these around. I would uh, hope that I could reach on the first step of my OD jaws. Um, the second uh, OD, OD number three, um, going into the interior step. Now we need to be a little bit concerned and I would want more accurate measurements down here so I could get that visual of Hey, is my approach, is my tool holder, is my turret going to contact that jaw if I get too close? Right? If I'm on the outside, then it's kind of wherever, uh, wherever that depth is. And it's still a concern, but maybe less of a concern than being on the first, second, or even the interior step. All right, so, you know, again, paying, paying uh, attention to the conditions. And then when you switch over to an ID, most of the machines are going to have a setting that you're going to have to reverse so that the machine knows that it's clamped or unclamped. And so if you're doing an ID uh, clamping, uh, it's going to start off in the middle. You hit the, uh, the pedal. It expands the jaws out. It knows that it's clamped on the interior. So it says, yeah, you're in a clamped position where the outside is, is gripping on, uh, on the outside of the stock. Let's see if I can hit the OK, just off screen. All right, uh, let's see, what else do we need? Uh, that should be all right. So we go ahead and accept. Oh, I guess it would have helped to set a few more diameters there. All right, so since I didn't put in enough information on the properties while I was talking, user divine, defined position 4.5, and the, uh, the Z position, let's go to minus six and see what it looks like. All right, so if I fly that back, well, you know, got that 30 thousandths gap there, but that's pretty much relative uh, to, um, uh, to what we've, uh, we've set for our visual. Come on, let me have, okay, let's just see if I hit enter. And okay, so that looks a little bit better. All right, so now that I have that set up, we can decide on facing, roughing, and uh, going through the uh, through the setup. All right, so lathe toolpath. We start with the uh, the facing operation. Um, I'm not sure where the five sixteenths came from. I want to say that most of the uh, the tools I've seen have been three eighths uh, inscribed circles. So we'll stay with the uh, the five sixteenths because I'm not that concerned. Uh, but I would want to find something a little bit. Um, 
a little bit closer. So I'm just going to do a quick check. All right, I'm okay with that one. Um, again, with the uh, the constant surface speed, but because that, you know, even in aluminum, that four and a half by six inch chunk is, you know, we're going to be a six, seven, eight pound chunk of metal, you know, whipping around there. Um, I'm not, you know, even if I have 3000 RPM, I'm not going to let it run up to 3000 RPM. So on something that size, I'm going to probably limit it maybe 1600 RPM. Um, you know, see what the balance is of the material, see how the, the rigidity of the machine, and then we can always um, bump that up a little bit. So the spindle speed at 200 constant surface speed, mainly the, the reason that this is limited at the outside, you may be, um, you know, three or 400 RPM. By the time it gets to the center, it will max at whatever you tell it it can max at for the machine. So most um, most machines, medium duty machines, are going to max at 3,000 RPM. Um, first run through, I'm not comfortable watching chunk that size spinning at 3,000 RPM. All right, we go over to um, let's see. We kind of jump through these uh, again. We're not doing uh, spindle orientations. Um, our tool was available out of the uh, the pre-select. Um, Home position at 10 and 10 is a little far away, but I think um, I, I would want to see this tool change, see what else is um, in the works. Uh, we haven't set up for anything in the way of drilling. Feed rate of 10 thousandths, well, that 10 thousandths per revolution, that's going to be a little on the aggressive side, but we have a lot of material to remove. So this kind of comes into how much depth of cut we're going to take. So if I balance that out, I can run a little bit faster across the part find the, uh, the depth that matches it, and then, um, and then adjust from there. All right, so entry amount, 100 thousandths. Um, we're leaving – oh, that's right. This was – I'm still in – I'm still trying to do turn mode. So let's – for the, uh, the facing operation, let's slow it down. All right, so I shifted into uh, turn mode a little too easy there. All right, so um, at this point, we haven't uh, told it to um, uh, take any material. If this was a rough saw cut, you know, so I had a, you know, like a really bad saw cut, you know, one side an eighth of an inch and got an angle down to where we're going to call our center, then I probably wouldn't want to take that interrupted cut in, in one shot. All right, that's, you know, pretty, uh, pretty heavy engagement. So, you um, there is a, um, a set, well, right now we're using stock for the finish. Um, we can give it a number of uh, finish passes and step overs and basically do roughing passes on the face. So let's see. So entry amount, 100,000, step over, cut amount, uh, over cut amount at the center, maybe 30,000, and then it will retract. Um, Default is that it will uh, lead out away from the uh, from the part and then retract up to where it can start the, uh, the finish. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so there's the 30 thousandths of overrun. If my tool has a 8 thousandths, a 15 thousandths, a 30 thousandths nose radius, um, I'm not really taking that into consideration at this point. I'm just telling it to go past center line enough that it won't leave that little nub right at the center of the uh, of the part. All right, going into the um, into the rough then. And we can select the uh, the entry point and then come over and select the end point and that becomes our chain. It's an OD operation, so it's automatically looking to the outside. So where in the mill, I was pretty obsessive about checking out which way the arrows are going. Not as much here. It's an OD operation. All right, so that feed rate at 10 thousandths. Um, let's stay with that. We're still going to max out at about 1,600. And then the constant surface speed here, though, I think we can uh, we can bump that up. 
So let's at least double it and go to 400. And then our roughing parameters. All right, so we can go equal steps. We can let it calculate it auto. So depth of cut of 100 thousandths, uh, minimum cut amount of 1 thousandths, stock to leave for the finished pass, 10 thousandths in X, 10 thousandths in Z. And then we're roughing into the, uh, to the stock if we wanted to. All right, so here's where it becomes an interior. Uh, feeding along the face, nibbling it in the radial direction as opposed to the axial. And at the very bottom of the screen, if we were switching around to a subspindle, actually feeding from the opposite direction. Uh, let's see, the lead in and lead out then. Our lead in, we're, it, it pretty much finds that edge okay, so I'm not uh, uh, doing too much with the, uh, the lead in. Probably the lead out if we extend. And I only need to extend it a little bit, maybe 50 thousandths. I want it to overrun. Um, that point at the end by just a little bit and then it's going to come back at 45 degrees so as it comes up to the point that it's headed out at 45 degrees we can adjust that um, I could bring it over zero you know some distance um, I really don't want to send it into the, the chuck so after it gets through with a little bit of extension then I'll I'm okay with it coming back at, at 45 so let's take a look at what that looks like All right, so we have the uh, the steps, and it's doing that um, that same thing that kind of threw me uh, last time with the nose radius and the compensation and switching over to those little arcs to blend and reduce the uh, the stair step. All right. Oh, and then the extension, the fifty thousandths extension. And it's coming back and feeding off at the 45 degrees. Right? And I believe it's doing that at each each level. So that's where it's shifting back, shifting back, and then going off of the lead up. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and hide these. And then the next one will be the uh, the finish pass. Yep. Slipping into mill. All right, so I tell it to finish. We already selected that uh, that chain on the previous operation. So if I come to last, I can reselect by just picking the little whatever that is crooked arrow and uh, let it pick up the last uh, last chain. And we're still staying with the uh, the same tool and the finish parameters. Step over number of finish passes at one inch at the, uh, the narrow end. I'm not really that concerned with the excuse me the tool pressure pushing away, changing the tolerance um, on uh, on this stock. If we needed a spring pass, though, we could add you know whatever number here. That's how many passes it's going to make. All right, and then the same thing. We'll extend. And this one's telling it to come off at 180 degrees. Oh, that's the lead in. Sorry, lead out. There we go, 45 degrees. We're extending it. I'll let it come off 50 thousandths again. It comes back at 45 for 100 thousandths and then clears the part and makes the rapid to the next position. All right, so that passes uh, is pretty straightforward. All right, so OD operations are fairly easy. I mean, if we're um, not doing any any you know, really crazy geometry, one or two tools, a rough and a finish, you know, the, the the thicker insert, and then possibly switching over to like the the 35 or the 55 degree insert uh, with a smaller radius, we can vary those, and it becomes a then an issue of how tight we can get in these corners. Because even here you can kind of see it, you know, nose radius, it's going to tie in, um, you know, as whatever that minimum nose radius is, that's where we're going to leave in the corner. All right, so let's, uh, let's save this since I'm working without a net yet again. All 
right. So for the uh, for the boring operation. Well, we said we needed to uh, to face off enough of this material, and if I remember correct, it was always uh, always kind of fun trying to uh, to get this plane shifted around. So at the very least, if I don't do another machine group, um, stock is going to stay about the same. What we need to do is change the the plane. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to change the jaw configuration. So. When I'm going through this process, I think I just want another machine group. The toolpath group isn't really going to help me in the same way that the um, that I can uh, kind of get away with uh, stock geometry, all that I can in the mill. So since I want my origin to be over here, I want uh, to have the uh, the jaws uh, be something different. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to uh, to a new machine group. All right, so right clicking at the uh, the very top and then let's go new machine group for the lathe. Notice that I can pick and include a mill. So if there were mill operations, we just switch over and we start in on those. And the thing that I'm looking for is oftentimes with the toolpath group, it can nest those. Try not to nest those. That gets a little confusing. All right, so by nest where these folders are, there would be another toolpath group and then potentially another toolpath group. I want to see them come down linear in linear fashion to where if there was a second toolpath group, it starts with this minus sign comes down and doesn't get embedded into uh, another toolpath group. All right, so we're still doing the lathe, still doing the uh, the settings. Uh, this one's going to get a little confusing until I get the um, everything set. Oh, and then let's. Um, Let's say let's uh, call it the. Um, well, no, let's go ahead and set. All right. Um, so it's six inches. We had the uh, the stock. All right. So back under planes, we need to uh, to switch these, and I need to create a new plane. And notice that our defaults, if we need to adjust for Plus D, D, Z, uh, plus, plus D, on D, minus D, plus Z, sorry, different directions, different ways of making the um, um, the coordinate system uh, work. We have that option. Let's see. I want then, well, let's just go into dynamic. The entity to align to is the face of the part. And then let's see, red is Z. Align with the axes, nope. Let's see, let's go to all two, three, four, five. All right, so. Okay, that'll work. So I want to say that the uh, the X is still in alignment. Nope, oh, come on, let me have it. All right, and then the Y. All right, we're going to have to verify this because... All right, we have a plane. And it is going to be a positive D, DZ. And did not shift my coordinate system. So let's make, um, make that current. Lathe upper left. Nope. All right, that's what I want, but I need my values to shift over. Oh, no, we're in the lathe. All right, so I missed a step somewhere. All 
Okay, so I have the coordinate. All right, why aren't you adjusting? All right, so we set up this, the stock for the second one. We just got to get those axes defined. All right, so properties, let's preview. That's the material that we have to remove. That's the, the approximate stock, so I'm okay with that. Enter to accept. Uh, we'll leave the same, uh, same shift. Now that's still coming up with the, uh, the stock plane. And then I want to preview one more time. Okay, so that was a better shift, but I don't have the one inch of material that we, uh, well, it's still not going to be exactly one inch. Um, 175 is going to be 825. Something like that. Okay, and then properties for stock, I believe that was the two and a half inch. And we didn't do the math to, uh, to back calculate, so the 5175 to the three and a half, that would be an inch and a half, 1675. Yeah, I don't quite think it's going to be on that one, though. Let's go back to the OD and preview one more time. So pretty close, except that i got to go to two inches. All right, so that gives me the visual. And we'll go ahead and accept. Picked up the plane. Let's go ahead and add the um, the, the facing operation for the uh, for the stock, and we'll figure out the axes here before uh, too long, hopefully. So lay the operation. going to stay with the facing cut. All right, so it does not match the stock plane for this machine group. Tool collisions, avoidance to the stock plane. All right, let's see what it does. Uh, it almost acts like it's going to try and go to, uh, to mill. So it went to top plane, and the tool plane is the plane that I created. Uh, if it keeps my, uh, my values, all right, so we do want a rough step over for this one because we have the 800 thousandths. So if we say that 100 thousandths at a time, that's, um, that's still on the aggressive side, but I think it's doable. And finish step over at 10 thousandths. Mainly I want to see it um, take that multiple steps. All right, we run past center, and that's the, uh, the tool radius. And the overcut amount, again, will be about 30 thousandths. And not too worried about those. All right. Well, that gets us at least a, a start. Um, for, the, uh, for the center drill, then, let's go into the, uh, the drilling operations. Yeah, I got to get that, that stock plane flipped around. So spot tool, spot tool, let's go with the, uh, the center drill. That's a really big center drill. <laughs> Three quarters of an inch, all right, maybe the half inch center drill. Uh, feed rate, inches per revolution. Drop that down five or six. Spindle speed at 1,000 RPM. Set with the, uh, the spindle speed set, I'm less concerned about max spindle speed. It's not doing any calculations under the constant surface speed. 
Uh, simple drill, no peck. Let's go minus uh, 0.5. We'll generate about a half inch diameter hole. And no custom parameters. All right, so it shows me the drill geometry. Um, going in with a half inch drill, maybe if it was an insert spade drill, um, something that could take that kind of load. Um, a standard silver and dimming, probably not. Yeah, if I needed to pack it, but it would still come back to um, you know at least having a pilot hole to uh, to remove um, some of that material. All right, we have uh, we have enough stations. So going with a uh, another drill. Well, we're going to see these. Uh, let's see. Let's go with the. Um, half inch diameter. All right, and then the RPM for aluminum, and we've removed all of that material, so half inch should be able to, that'd be around 1600, probably a little on the lower side, maybe 14 or uh, 1200, depending on what we get. And then uh, right now it's set to simple drill, no peck. Let's go with a uh, peck drill, and then if I need to, I'll switch it over to the I, J, and K. All right, so the depth is we're going to select a point. I'm going to let it go ahead and drill to whatever that, that number was. And um, do we want to include the drill point in the, uh, the mix? Oh, wrong one. So if we go with uh, drill tip uh, compensation, and not worried about a breakthrough amount. Clearance of 0.25, retract of 0.1. I'll go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, so the drill tip comes up to the uh, to the edge. And then uh, let's see, we were going to, well, I don't think I decided I was gonna bore this out. I would like to put a threading operation, internal threading operation with the, uh, the boring bar. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up. If we have an 875, we'll stay with our one inch eight. All right, so another drill. And really gotta get that coordinate system figured out. <laughs> All right, so center drills, drills. All right, so not quite gonna make it to, uh, to one inch. Maybe put a note in there about adding the 7H SD drill. Just a quick check, make sure there isn't another one down here. All right, and then as far as the size, see if it'll let us edit that. There we go. All right, so three quarter inch shank, probably still a half inch, but that's okay. 118 degree drill point, we'll go 875. High speed steel material. And then it's in the, um, the lathe inch library. I'm not real concerned with the holder. I do want to update the name though. And tool station number, feed rates, we'll set all of those in the, uh, in the mix. All right, so adds the tool, it becomes tool four. RPM for a, um, yeah, it's not going to be that far off, probably uh, 250. And then the uh, the PEX still has the same depth. Uh, we'll go with the uh, the PEX drill. Oh, I don't think I set that on the other one. Selected it, but then didn't uh, didn't pick anything. So, um, depending on the post, it may just see the first pack and and include that into every every setting. Um, if we go with the um, the depths, and then also uh, thinking about it, um, need to look at the um, the parameters out of the operator's manual, 
because the uh, what was it the G73 doesn't quite work um, the same as the mill. And I found I, I just realized I think I slipped into I J and K that I on this is actually um, for the for the Haas machining centers turning centers is the taper angle. So be careful with um, with uh, those items. So um, first pick now it was the threading for the G73. All right, now I'm sufficiently confused. Anyway, point one. Um, so let's see the G83. Oh, first pack, uh, let's go ahead and plunge it half an inch. Each sub subsequent pack, um, 100, 100 thousandths. And then pack clearance. That actually doesn't even need to come out of the, uh, the hole entirely. And then no breakthrough amount. Okay, so I take it at one and something. All right, so that opens up the um, the whole location. Uh, let's go back and double check the other uh, parameters on the drill. All right, so this was the um, the half inch. Make sure that that one comes up. No, I didn't uh, didn't hit the pack on it. All right, so. Half inch, um, half D would be 0.25, 100 thousandths each subsequent pack. All right, so we get those uh, those included. Go ahead and regenerate the tool path. <clears throat> All right, so if we um, if we trust that our 875 drill drilled a, an 875 hole and we don't have much in the way of clearance, so we're going to be relying on that um, that boring operation. All right, so threading operations, uh, probably not a 0.25 diameter. Half inch diameter is going to be getting close by the time you include the extension, by the time you include the diameter of the boring bar. We're going to be pretty close to the, uh, the 875, so we're not going to want to include a lot of retract. Um, and that is one of the warnings that we should see coming up. Uh, RPM and feed rate pretty much is going to be based on the thread that we define. Right. What we can do then is um, is plan for the engagement. All right. So threads per inch. So it was going to be eight. And included angle sixty degrees. Thread angle thirty. Major diameter is one inch. Minor diameter eight seventy five. So thread depth 0.0625. Uh, in position, not even. <laughs> So we were at um, the 1.675, uh, I think was what it was at. So one and a half should be, uh, should be plenty. Let's see, if we're doing this in reverse, well, we're gonna have to see what that gets because the start position at minus 5.175 does not seem like it picked up my plane. So I may still have that, uh, that plane issue uh, working against me. Uh, let's see, equal area is the amount of material removed in the triangle, so it reduces as it goes. Equal depths, uh, if we tell it to take 10 thousandths, it'll take 6 10 thousandths passes. If we tell it to take equal areas, it'll vary by how, many, how much metal, uh, metal it removes out of each of those triangles so it stays consistent, which in theory should be more consistent, chatter, engagement, you know, all of those types of things. So... Um, if we do a uh, number of cuts with equal area, it's going to divide that material out into five cuts, whatever that works out to. Um, stock clearance at 100 thousandths, well, we'll be a little close. Um, not worried about um, uh, the overcut here. The uh, anticipated pull-off, well, we didn't, um, we didn't take a groove tool and go put a relief at the bottom of that hole. So whatever, as long as it doesn't run into the taper of the um, of the drill bit, well, it it um, uh, retracts where it retracts. And then the amount of last cut and spring cuts, if it's a harder material or we're um, doing a close fit, maybe we would um, do a spring pass. So let's at least see what it looks like. Um, starts with the tool embedded in the stock. 
Yes, I want to save the information. So that 5.175, this should have been our zero. So like I said, it looks strange. Anything that looks strange, we're going to kind of double check. So start position. Well, it started outside of the stock. And then let it go to minus one and a half. Now let's see what uh, what it gives. Oops. So not quite a complete thread on the on the bottom, but the top. We're starting out. We got the lead. It doesn't quite go all the way to the bottom, right? I can make that uh, that adjustment as as needed. All right, with an inch and a half, if I get one and three eighths, I'm probably probably gonna call it good. All right. So again, these are kind of optional tinker with and I will have to um, to get this um, uh, XY sorted out to where it reads the proper DZ. Okay so this is a little addendum to the uh, lecture on Tuesday night. Kind of got uh, wrapped up and uh, not uh, saw those errors, couldn't get the, um, the geometry the way I wanted it. Went to the select lathe plane and Really was kind of uh, you know I couldn't couldn't pick out the um, uh, the combination here so I know I went to this um, to this selection and so we're gonna set D and Z all right so that gives me the D and the uh, the direction and we have the lathe upper left and let's see which way did that jump. All right, so that's still X and Z. So let's uh, let's try that again. Plus D minus Z, and then we're going to set everything to that plane. Now that still didn't uh, still didn't quite get it. So lathe upper left is what we want, and then let's just um, double check for the for the face. We'll use that one as the experiment. We'll go into the parameters. All right, and then. We were on uh, take that back. We'll go into the toolpath group. So stock setup and the plane is still there. Alright, so let's see if we can go to the plus D minus Z. And so that one was created, but it doesn't have the correct location quite so everything shifted and I think we were what five one seven something so with um, with that coordinate we need to go back into the uh, to the properties for the stock all right so the OD was good so let's just see what it looks like with a um, six inch length and then we're going to shift it minus five and hit tab all right and so since that is jumping off the screen we'll hit tab one more time and i kind of move over so that was pretty close or at least closer so let's determine which way it's going four moves the wrong way so six inch length with six inches of cut. Well, that material is already already out of there. So, and if I fly this over, all right, we'll go back into the properties, and we moved uh, the position, but that was a minus. So let's see if we change that to a plus. All right, so I need to do the math again, but uh, let's go to. Two is a little closer, three is a little closer, and again, these are just for reference anyway, so pretty much gives us a, this is where we're going to hold on to it when we get to the machining. All right, so let's double check. And so we have in each of the operations a plus Z, a uh, plus D minus Z, and lathe is still upper left, so that gives us its orientation really need to get a better explanation of what's going on with those, but let's go with the regenerate the toolpath. All right, so the stock update took this material, and then it went in, 
uh, for the uh, for the drill, and then we did the uh, the threading operation. All right, and again, the uh, the drill and the thread operation were, were optional; they weren't uh, weren't required. But um, uh, I think you should be able to do the uh, the facing operation without too much uh, too much trouble. So keep in mind that under the planes, the select lathe plane, and then we'll go into uh, pick up that uh, that geometry.